Welcome, welcome to the Victorious Life TV broadcast. I'm Lisa Boldo, and tonight we are going to be talking about how to live a transformed life. You know, so many people say that they want to live victoriously, but what does that really mean? It means to be an overcomer in every area of life, every area of life. So I want to welcome you. I see you all jumping on right now, and I just, I just appreciate you being here with me. I'm going to try to cover as much as I can in the time that we have together, you know, just about 30 minutes, and uh, it's a lot, but I think that it's really going to bless you. So Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, Father, I thank you for this time, Lord, on the broadcast with the viewers and for those who will watch the replay. And Father, right now, I pray that even as I open my mouth tonight, Lord, that you would fill it and your words will go forth and help to transform the multitudes. Father, right now, we just thank you. We give you all honor, praise, and glory in the name of your precious Son and our precious Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Well, Okay, so the Word of God tells us that faith is the victory that overcomes the world. But it's not faith in just anything. It's faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, right? I'm going to dive right in, okay? 1 John 5, 3 says, For this is the love of God, <clears throat> that we keep His commandments. And His commandments are not burdensome. There's only two. Love the Lord your God and love your neighbor as yourself, right? The law is already written on your heart. If you're born again, right, the Bible says that the laws are the law of God is written on your heart. And so by the Holy Spirit, you're able to, to live that out. So let me finish with this scripture. And his commandments are not burdensome because everyone born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who then overcomes the world? Only he who believes that Jesus is God's son. Do you believe that Jesus is God's son? Of course you do. That's why you're here. Praise God. So Jesus won the victory, right? He won the victory. He won the battle against the devil 100%. There's no battle that Jesus did not win. The enemy is defeated. He is absolutely defeated, okay? So if Jesus is your Lord, and I always say this, that means that you have the very Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God's Son, right? The Spirit of Jesus really is the Holy Spirit, according to Galatians 4, 6. God sent the Spirit of His Son to live in you and me. That's the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of promise. And this is what's so beautiful. You know, Jesus in the flesh Right? He came in the flesh, he died, he was resurrected, and he still has a fleshly body. He said he's flesh and bone now, not flesh and blood. Right, blood The blood was all shed for you and me. So he's, he, Jesus in the flesh right now is seated in heaven next to God the Father, right? On the right, at the right hand of God in the place of honor, right? At the same time, he's at work here on the earth in you and me, through the Holy Spirit. Oh my gosh, you know, I, I really feel like I'm going to end up, I mean, I'm going to probably um, teach and preach this for the rest of my life because this is something, this is, this is what Paul spent all his life after he met Jesus trying to help believers, you know, and people to understand that once they received Jesus, they received the Holy Spirit. And that's why we can do the works that Jesus did. You know, what was so beautiful is, and I've heard this said that if the devil knew what he was doing, he never would have crucified Jesus. Because by crucifying Jesus, Jesus dying and re resurrecting, and then sending the Holy Spirit into all of his believers, oh my gosh, this is how, this is how Jesus can re reproduce himself here on the earth through you and me. And that's that's what God wants, right? For us to be conformed into the very image of his son so we can do the same things that Jesus did and bring God glory. It's beautiful. Okay, 1 John 3, 8 says that Jesus came in the flesh on the earth to destroy the works of the devil. Mm. 
Mm, right? And so what should you and I do? We should be destroying the works of the devil. And yet, so many are bogged down with depression and oppression and anxiety and bad relationships. And, you know, honestly, the stuff is carnal. It's carnal. And to, the Bible says to be carnally minded is death. I'm going to talk more about that in a little bit. But, right? We're supposed to be doing the works that Jesus did, destroying the works of the devil. Well, what are the works of the devil? Anything and everything that opposes Christ. Sickness, disease, right? Demons, all that. Is there any of that stuff in heaven? Nope. We need to do away with it here on the earth. I mean, we've got, we all have a sphere of influence and God wants you to be transformed into the image of his son. But that's going to take renewing of the mind, which I'm going to get to. And I'm telling you, stay with me here because this, this is going to help you tonight. This is going to help you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. The very spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit lives in you. Oh my gosh, I can't stress it enough. So here's the deal. When you got born again, right? You repented of your sins. You asked Jesus to come into your heart, be the Lord of your life, right? You were immediately sealed with the spirit of promise, which is the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 1.13 says that, okay? So from that moment, your spirit was then recreated, made into a brand new creation. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 and 18 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. If you're in Christ, meaning if you ask Jesus to come in and be your Lord and Savior, that means you are now in Christ. He's in you. How is he in you? The Holy Spirit, right? And it says, the old has passed away. What has passed away? Your old spirit. Your old sin nature, right? It's passed away. Your spirit, your old spirit has passed away. And God has literally made your spirit brand new. And in addition, his Holy Spirit came to live inside of you. And now his spirit and your spirit are one. 1 Corinthians 6.17 says that he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with the Lord. One spirit. You and Jesus. You know how Jesus said, the Father is in me, I'm in the Father, right? And they're both in us. Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful because Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three in one, and they're in you. Christ in you. Okay. Second Corinthians, okay, is what I was saying. Therefore, if anyone's in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ. What does that mean? It means that Christ, by he was the bridge. And, and, and oh, he's beautiful. He's, I don't want to refer to him as a bridge, but you get what I'm saying. That Jesus, he, um, he brought us back to the Father. He reconciled us back to the Father by dying for us, taking all the sins. He reconciled us back to our Father. And then it says, so all this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ, right? Through what he did at the cross and gave us, gave you and me the ministry of reconciliation, the same ministry to bring people back to God. Isn't that something? So it says it right there. We are supposed to carry out the work that Jesus did. He passed the baton to the apostles who then passed the baton. And right for, so for all the generations, we're supposed to be doing the same thing. Okay. Okay. This is what I started to say before. So you ask Jesus to come in and be your Lord, right? It means that you're saved, but now you also have to start doing what your King says to do. What does he say to do in this area of your life, in that area of your life, here, there, here, there, right? Relationships, health, finances. What is he saying to do, right? What does your king say to do? This is so important. So, and, and you know how you're going to know is the word. When you open the word and you read it, you're like, oh, so this is what he says about this. So this is what he says about this. Hmm. I'm used to doing it a different way. Mm, I need to do it this way. And what happens is then when you line up your, your mind with the word and your heart and your mind are in agreement, now things happen, right? Transformation only comes by the word. Okay. Okay. 
So here's the thing. If you don't renew your mind with God's word, once you're born again, your spirit is made perfect, but your mind is not, right? Your soul, your mind, your will, your emotions is not made perfect. You've got to start. You know, it's like nothing is free. Jesus paid the price with his life so that you, you could be, he could get the Holy Spirit inside of you. He paid the price so that you could have eternal life, so that you could live for him, with him forever, but also so that you could do the works he did here on the earth, right? Bringing him glory. We're made, yes, to worship God, but also to bring him glory. How do we bring him glory? When we're conformed to the image of his son, right? We bring God glory. He's pleased with us when we, you know, have faith and, you know, when we do the word. But Here's the thing. Jesus did his part and he did everything that ever needed to be done. But now you and I have a part and our part is to renew our mind to, so that we can be transformed into the image of Christ. Okay. So, you know, a lot of people think that once they get born again, oh, I'm born again. Yeah, this is great. I don't have to do anything else. Wrong, eh, wrong answer. Yeah, you do. Because if you don't, what's going to happen is since your spirit is now made perfect, but your mind isn't, they're going to be at war all the time, right? The war is, it's, it's <sighs> the spirit and the unrenewed mind are at war all the time. It's not going to work. Okay. So why? Because the mind is still carnal. Mm. It's still carnal, which means it's still lusting after the things of the world. It's still looking at the way the world does things and says, mm, I need to do that. I need to keep up with the Joneses. Oh, but what are they going to think of me? I can't do that. Oh, well, so-and-so said I can't. Or you have a me, me, me spirit. Ooh, no good. I'm going to touch on that in a little bit too. But the word of God says the only way you can be transformed is by the renewing of your mind with God's word, right? So you've got to take out your old way of thinking, put in God's word. That's how it's done. I'm serious. You, you know, you can't get around it. Let's look at Romans 12, 2 in particular. Do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that by testing, by testing, you're going to have some tests. You're going to have opportunity, you know, to mess up, to agree with God, to not agree with God. Okay. It says that by testing, you may discern or recognize what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Okay. The new living translation, that was the uh, English standard version or the ESV. And then the new living translation says same, same scripture, but different translation. It says, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Now, how is God going to do it? His word and his spirit, because as you put his word in, his spirit is going to bear witness with your new recreated spirit. And now things are going to happen when you say yes to God and no to the devil. And that's really what you have to do. Romans 8, 5 through 8, <clears throat> excuse me, it says those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about sinful things, but those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about things that please the Spirit. So what are you thinking about? You got to think about these things. What are you thinking about? Okay, it says, so letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death. But letting the spirit control your mind leads to life and peace, right? And so it says, for the sinful nature is always hostile to God. It never did obey God's laws and it never will. That's why those who are still under the control of their sinful nature can never please God. Because God is pleased, you know, when you're in agreement with his word and you live that way. Okay? Okay. So what do you need to do to get your thoughts in line with God's thoughts? Well, 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5 gives you the answer. I love that. I'm telling you, every answer to everything you need is in the word of God. And you know, the sad thing is that so many just will not pick it up. They want someone else to think for them. For them you know, and so here's the thing. Yeah, it's great to listen to good preaching. But what happens afterwards? 
because the word of God says that the enemy will come and steal. You know, he comes to steal the word that you just received right away. So you cannot be transformed if you're not in the word of God, if you're not listening daily, you know, and say it out loud. You listen, faith comes by hearing, 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 right? The word of God. Okay, so how, what do you need to do to get your thoughts in line with God's thoughts, right? 2 Corinthians 10.5 gives you the answer. This is what it says. For though we walk in the flesh, meaning for uh, although we walk in human bodies, right? We do not war after the flesh. So our weapons are not going to be, uh, you know, what humans would use. Guns, knives, you know, all that stuff, right? It says for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, right? They're not just humanly and worldly. It says, but mighty, our weapons are mighty through God, Holy Ghost, right? The spirit of God in you, the word of God, which is the sword of the spirit, the name of Jesus, which breaks every chain, right? Okay. I'm passionate. I really am. Uh, okay. For our weapons, the weapons of our warfare, believers, right? Are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. How? You cast down imaginations, thoughts, right? It says every high thing. So every thought that comes to you that tries to make itself higher than the word of God. Okay. That is like an exalted thought. Like it's a thought that comes and it's like, are you going to put that thought above God's word? Or are you going to make God's word are you going to make that thought submit to God's word? That's what you need to do. See, it's like that. Until you renew the mind, and listen, it takes practice. It's effort. It takes practice. You've got to, you know, read it, do it. Read it, do it. Read it, do it. Because I've heard it said like this. Your mind is renewed to the point that the word of God dictates your daily actions. Or maybe I'm going to say that again. Your mind is renewed to the degree that the word of God dictates your daily actions. Yeah. And that's the truth. That's to the degree that you know your mind is renewed and that you're walking in the spirit, you know? So, okay. And it says, <clears throat> okay, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty to, through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations in every high thing, right? That exalts itself against the knowledge of God. So every thought that comes that tries to make itself higher than God's word, that is, that's no good. And so you've got to bring that thought, you got to take it captive. You got to take that thought captive and say, nope, we're going to do it God's way. And that's what it means to pull down a stronghold. First of all, What's a stronghold? Okay, some of you might be watching going, what is she talking about? What is a stronghold? A stronghold is a thought that you have thought about often that you've come into agreement with. You agree with it. You accept it. You believe it is truth. That's a stronghold. That's a stronghold. And I'll just give you just a for instance, addiction or, um, and I'm not picking on smokers, okay, or I don't even want to call them smokers, people that smoke. I don't want to label anybody, right? But people that smoke and have it and say an addiction, that's a stronghold. Any addiction is a stronghold. It is a, it's thoughts and that's all it is. It's thoughts. It's thoughts that have literally, they have a strong hold on you and you feel like you can't shake it. That's a stronghold. Okay. Mm. You feel like you can't shake it, but guess what? The bottom line is it is a decision to say yes to God and no to the devil. And to say yes to the devil is carnally minded and it leads to death. To say yes to God leads to life and peace. Because mm, that's living in the spirit, right? And Jesus said, the words I speak to you, they're spirit and they're life. Glory to God. Okay. So the whole key is you've got to think about what you're thinking about. And so, let me tell you something. I remember, you know, I mean, some of you may have seen in my testimony and, you know, my story, and I'm not going to get into all that here, but I will tell you in a nutshell, I was riddled with anxiety, depression, um, oh my gosh, and relationships, neediness, codependence, 
I was so depressed. There were, there were times like I didn't want to get out of bed for three days. No good. My mom, here's the deal. I was in such bondage. And on top of that, I was addicted to psychics. That's, I know some of you are probably watching going, ooh, that's ridiculous. And some of you are watching going, oh, wow. Hmm. I have that too going on. You know what? It's a decision to say yes to God and no to the devil. And I'm going to tell you, it's easy to, it's easy. It's, you're saying, no, it's not easy. What I mean is, it's easy to, 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 to shake. How do I say this? It's easy to say yes to God and no to the devil. But, but then the hard part comes when you have to live it out after that. Okay. But you can do it. You can do it. Listen, if I can do it, you can do it. And I was addicted and my whole family was scared for me. They really were. They were like, you know, my mother was like, Lisa, you need to be on medication. I was like, no, heck no. You know, I had a psychiatrist tell me, I'm not laughing because I know that some people, you know, have been diagnosed with bipolar or whatever. And basically that's what he told me. He's like, you, you know, you, you're bipolar. And he said, everything is all high or it's all low. There's no middle ground. And I was like, I just looked at him and I mean, I had a lot of pride and I'm not proud of it. I was a rebel. I was very controlling. Some of you are like, no, not you. I'm like, yeah, I really was. That's how I know how to deal with controlling spirits. Okay. I walked out of his office, but before I walked out, I turned around and I looked at him and I said, you're bipolar. And I ripped up whatever he wrote on that paper and I threw it in the trash. I wasn't bipolar. I was without God. I needed the Lord. I had issues. I had issues of abandonment and rejection and abuse and you name it. You know, I was in a violent relationship, abusive relationship for five and a half years. And it's like, why did I stay? Why did I put up with it? Right? My self-esteem was shot. But guess what? And then I turned to psychics. I'm telling you, I went from the frying pan to the fire. It was awful. And the enemy was like, ha, 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 thinking he won. Well, guess what? He didn't win. He lost. And he lost big time because now I am on a mission. And all I do is help people to come into the kingdom of God, know who they are, and kick the enemy's booty. And I am so serious about that. Mm. Okay. I don't even know why I got into all that, but... <laughs> Sorry, I just, I don't know, that might have been for somebody. But anyway, so what I was saying is, it's not easy, but it's worth it. It's worth it. I'm telling you, your whole life will change. My whole life changed. I mean, there was a time that there was so much anxiety. Every day it was anxiety, anxiety, anxiety. And I was like, it was like, am I ever going to shake this? All it was was thoughts. And guess what? As I kept listening to the word of God and renewing my mind and the word, I, and, but I'm telling you, I went after it. And this is what I started to say before. The sad thing is so many Christians won't do what it takes to come out of that. And I'm telling you, my friend, it's easy. When I say it's easy, I mean, it's a decision, right? It's, it's not easy in that it's going to cost you. It's going to take effort. But I'm telling you, the joy on the other side is unspeakable. It's a life of peace. Listen, I'm not telling you there's never going to be any battles. Oh, there's going to be battles, but you're going to win. And you're going to win. You're going to win. You're going to win. Why? Because the greater one lives in you. I'm not yelling at you. I'm just very passionate. <clears throat> you know? Ugh, okay. So I would start to say, you know, before too, that a carnally minded person is focused on self, right? Because that's what the world is focused on. And everything is hurry, 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 hurry. You got to do it now. You got to do it now or you're going to miss out. No, you're not. No, you're not. You have peace. When you're paying attention to the spirit of God, you have peace. If somebody needs an answer right now, I would say no. The answer is no. I need 24 hours. I need, I'm, I need my time to think about it and then I'll give you an answer, right? Mm, okay, so here's the thing. Oh, wow, I can't even believe this. This is what happens. We're almost out of time. Ha ha. So I really hope that this is blessing you guys. Are you getting something out of this? I do hope so. <clears throat> and I will say this. The more you start to renew your mind, 
the easier it will get and the vict more victorious you're going to become, the stronger mentally you're going to get. I'm telling you. And then when something comes up, you'll be recalling how God came through for you. I still do that. I'm like, Lord, I remember when you did this and you did this and you did this. David did the same thing. He always recalled what God did for him. You know, before he went out to face Goliath, right? You know, Saul was trying to put, you know, this armor on him and all this stuff. And he was like, get this stuff off of me. You know, God did this for me. He did this for me. He did this. And he's going to do this too. You got to recall past victories too. This is really good. The other thing is, in your lifestyle, we shouldn't participate in things that the one in you, the Christ, that Christ in you would not participate in, right? And I, and I want to say, you know, there's even TV shows out there that I'm telling you, the way they get you to renew your mind to the world is they add humor. They make it funny. All of a sudden you turn something on, you're like, mm, not really sure I should be watching this. All of a sudden they throw something funny in and you're like, oh, you, you have a belly laugh and you're like, well, that wasn't so bad. That was kind of funny. Next thing you know, you're watching the whole thing and there's some funny parts, but subtly they're getting you to renew your mind to what they want. And then what happens is as you keep watching, you know, maybe a couple days later, oh, there's that show again. You turn it on again, what's happening? compromise and compromise leads to tolerance that leads to acceptance right and Jesus said a little leaven leavens the whole loaf right beware the Pharisees a little leaven leavens everything what does that mean it means a little compromise ruins everything it ruins everything because it will renew your mind listen how do people get addicted to cigarettes and again I'm not picking on people that smoke but how does it happen right or a psychic you go once, hmm, that was interesting. You take a puff, right? And you're like, oh, that wasn't so bad. Oh, I think it kind of made me feel good. I think I want another one. You see? And that's how the enemy works, okay? But, and then it becomes a strong hold, and then you can't shake it. It becomes a full-blown addiction because you said yes to the devil the first time. Okay, let's just talk about breaking it because we need to break it. I'll show you how to break it and then we're out of time so what you need to do is it's actually very simple okay what you need to do first is you need to go before God and say father in Jesus name I repent Lord repent means to change your direction change your way of thinking it doesn't mean I'm sorry I got caught it means you choose to change you say father I am sorry I repent for coming into agreement for having come into agreement, right, or that I came into agreement with any unclean spirit that opposes you, the word of God, Jesus Christ, Father, I'm sorry, and I just ask you to wash me clean, forgive me right now, in Jesus' name, and then you speak, unclean spirits, I command you, go now, in Jesus' name, remember, because you have authority, Jesus gave you all authority, all authority over all the power of the enemy, Luke 10, 19, and nothing shall by in any means harm you, right? So first you repent that you came into agreement with that. Then, and you mean it with your whole heart, then command that to go now in Jesus' name. And if you have sickness in your body, you command that to go too. All pain, all sickness, all disease, go now in Jesus' name. And you mean it and you say it from your belly. Mm where the Holy Spirit is, and you do it. And then you say, I thank you, and I command my body to be healed from my head to my toes in Jesus' name right now. Thank you, Lord, and it is done because Jesus paid the price already at that whipping post. By his stripes, you were healed, which means you are healed. First Peter 2.24, right? Okay, so then the next step is now, the enemy's going to try to come back with a vengeance. You know you want it. You know you want to do this. No. You need to get in God's word. Start putting the word. Listen to the word. Read the word. And whatever you're reading, say yes to. Even put your name in there. You know, out loud. <laughs> I remember Smith Wigglesworth. He read the New Testament out loud for like two hours a day. And I just thought that was the neatest thing because the more you speak the word, the more you internalize the word. And you hearing yourself speak it 
is going to be more powerful, even more powerful. You know, we are totally out of time tonight, but remember, he's given you his word. He's given you his name, the name of Jesus. He's given you his spirit. You have everything you need. And if you haven't asked Jesus to be your Lord, do it. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. Change my life forever. I believe that God the Father raised you on the third day. You're alive now and you live forever. Teach me your ways. Baptize me in your Holy Spirit and with fire. Let me be on fire for you, Lord. And I thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. That's all you have to do. If you need to rewind this and listen to that again, you can do that. So I love you. I bless you in Jesus. I ask you to share this video. If it's been a blessing to you, let's advance the kingdom of God together. Make sure that you like and follow the page. And what else did I want to say? You can also set notifications to see when I go live and you can jump on. And I just really hope this has been a blessing to you tonight. I know it has been for me. I love you. I bless you in Jesus. And I'll see you on the Victorious Life TV broadcast real soon. And I've got something really special for you next week. So, all right. Take care. Have a wonderful rest of your night. All right. God bless you. Bye-bye.